got John Gillis here and myself Angel Begov presenting to you the tubular control arm optimization. On the right you see a video of a automotive suspension moving in its full range of motion. A control arm is basically a hinged link between the suspension and the steering knuckle. The steering knuckle is uh, where the wheel is attached to the wheel bearing. There's three main methods of production. The uh, first is tubular, which is the one we're we are interested in. It's where uh, tubes are bent, cut, and welded together to form a control arm. The, another method of production is casting, where molten metal is poured into a mold. And then the third most common method of production is stamping, where a piece of sheet metal is formed between a tool and a die. We find that the, the advantages of a tubular control arm is that the construction is simple, the lightweight, and the design is also very simple. Okay, what we have over here is our four designs that we did research on and they came up as the most common configuration of tubular control arms. We used one inch OD 12 gauge steel for all of our control arms and the only constraints when designing the control arms was the uh, separation between the bushings which is 8 inches and the distance from the bushings to the ball joint is 12 inches. The boundary conditions we used in ANSYS were fairly simple. For both types of loading, we used uh, a fixed boundary at the control arm bushings. In an actual vehicle, these bushings can rotate a little bit, but for the, the purpose of our analysis, we fixed them. We did two types of loading, one which is a z-axis in the ball joint, which you can see on the right, and it's just a vertical load that pushes the control arm up, and then the second is a y-axis bearing load at the ball joint which you can see at the left and both of these types of loading can be seen when a car goes over a bump. We had to decide between three mesh sizes coarse, medium and fine. Within coarse mesh we saw that in the ball joint and the bushings there are some high aspect ratios where one side is bigger than the other which leads to bad results therefore we did not use coarse mesh. Fine meshing concentration, concentrated the stress in a very small area which increased the stress and we decided that this is not accurate enough therefore we stuck with medium mesh for the rest of the analysis. We chose tetrahedral element type due to their simplicity, low aspect ratio and higher number of elements which improved our results. So here is a few of our plots that we came up with from our analysis. This is actually only four of 16 plots we generated. We kind of tried to highlight the, the different areas. The top left is a deformation due to a z-axis load. Top right is uh, stress due to a z-axis load. You can see the stress peaks at the top because the, because the control arm is bending upward. The bottom left is uh, deformation due to a y-axis load and then the bottom right is stress due to a y-axis load and you can see the stress peaks on a side because it's bending bending backwards. Here we have the results from our optimization in Y, Z deflection and Y and Z max stress. We created a ranking system of five criteria, the stresses and the deflections plus the weight. Ranking the control arms from one to four allowed us to select the most optimized design by averaging the rank and that was the A arm which is the best in Y deflection, Y stress and weight and is the worst in Z deflection and Z stress. So to further optimize the A arm we tried to add some ribs to increase the stiffness in the Z direction. On the left you can see uh, uh, X configuration of ribs where it's just two tubes forming an X and on the right is the uh, sheet metal rib where a sheet me piece of sheet metal is welded in the middle of the A arm and on the bottom you can see the deflection and stress plots of these two. Here is the results from our further optimization of the A-arm. The X-rib control arm uh, greatly improved the Z-deflection which is uh, an area it was really lacking however it generates some complex manufacturing. The sheet metal rib reduced the Z-axis stress slightly but for the amount of weight it added we don't think it's really valuable to add the sheet metal rib However, it does provide accommodation for a spring. Thank you very much. Go green and let us know if you have any questions.